of Georgetown today, another Big East action. Boy, Pittsburgh is a surprise team of the league this year. They're like Boston College was last year. Ben Howland doing a great job with that team. Beautiful shot by Loxa coming off the screen. Maris Loxa, the sophomore from Latvia. Both his parents coaches in that country. And he hits the three in the lead now up to eight for the Friars. A basketball background. He played this summer in those games in Beijing, China, and played very well. Simmons has the ball knocked away by Linehan. John Linehan is amazing. He can really be bothersome. He can Let's disrupt see, an offense in an iota. A one-man press. Now the shot by Tyler's no good. The big dog, Baruman, puts it back up. The physical nature of a Baruman against Douthat, who is very thin. Advantage, Raphael. Raphael is 6'9", 255 from uh, L.A. City College. His first year with Miami, J.C. transfer. The big dog, they call him, and he makes a big play inside to cut the lead to six. You can see Miami really trying to extend their defense outside. Being aware of the three, you cannot help off people. Tyler guarding Laxa away from the basket. The tendency is to go help on a drive. If he does that, Laxa is open from deep. Big game today, Kentucky and Notre Dame. Your alma mater. You see Chris Thomas, that young freshman for Notre Dame? Wow. You like him, huh? Oh, man. Solid as the day is long. Leads the Big East in assists. And his assist to turnover ratio is phenomenal. One of the best in the country. He doesn't give it up. He's among the best guards in the league at the point guard position. You're looking at another one, Lenahan, right here. The foul inside, out of bounds plays. Advantage situation right there. When you have the ball underneath the basket, sometimes getting over screens, very, very difficult. Ryan Gomes playing very well. Ball comes in, bounds to Kabah. And here is Linehan setting the offense. And Miami now getting into a half-court game. Uh, Tim Welch uh, did say before the game, though, Bob, he'd like to run a lot if he can because they're outsized at almost every position. Absolutely. They would prefer, they do not like five-on-five half-court. They're much more efficient in transition. Long ball by Linehan. Aaron's out. Ryan Gomes come down the rebound, tap it over, and now the beautiful pass inside. <laughs> Linehan to Gomes. Gomes looks like a guy that's been uh, like a senior. He plays like a senior. He really knows where to be. You know, I mean, uh, he, he's always in the right space, place at the right time. Takes advantage of the defense. And now, here comes the break. Kavai gets the ball up. Gomes again drives in and lays it in. Beautifully done. And all of a sudden, it's a 10-point advantage for the underdog Friars. And Harry Clark has seen enough. Well, Ryan Gomes is leading the fast break, getting out quickly. And the Miami big men are not covering him. Two people are responsible. The Miami guard, Simmons, should be back. Barnes is trying to get there, but Gomes outrunning Baruman and outrunning Elton Tyler. Cute pass right here by Lenahan inside off the loose ball. As you mentioned, Gomes playing like a senior, knowing where to be at the right time. He's got lots of points already. Well, he's hit six of seven shots, Bob, for 12 points. Ryan Gomes, leading scorer in the game. To get information on your favorite Big East team, go online at www.bigeast.org for all the basketball and conference news from around the Big East. Great website. It's all there. Men's and women's competition. And here comes the uh, Miami Hurricanes. Robins on a 13-2 run. Unbelievable shooting by Providence. And this is against a good defensive team. So you can't talk about Miami being a bad defensive team. They're the second best defensive team in the league. And this interesting Miami before and after New Year's Day. Of course, they were 13-0 and their scoring and field goals and everything has changed since that time. And part of the reason for that is they are now in Big East play instead of non-conference play. Did the, the Canes have a big New Year's Eve, or what happened there? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they were celebrating they went on the road South Beach. Four straight games. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. That'll do it. On the drive, Salmon can't get it to go, and uh, Salmon's goes to the floor, but no foul call. But there is one whistled against uh, Providence, one of his teammates. There a little bit. We'll go to the line. Well, Salmon's really—they do a good job of clearing the lane out. Providence attacking him. And of course, on the boards, when you drive to the basket and there's help, 
That is a signal for your teammates to go to the offensive boards, and as a result, James Jones is going to get his two at the free throw line. Maris locks the call for the personal foul. Providence off to a nice start. Paolo Last. Coelho enters. Yeah, backcourt player from Portugal. Seldom Coelho. used this year. He played a lot more when Leonard Hamilton was coached, but Simmons and Barnes and Salmons doing most of the duty in the backcourt. Jones has missed two free throws already in this game, uncharacteristic of his play. There's a Providence team with 10 freshmen and sophomores on the roster, but they're capable of a big game a week ago. They beat St. John 78-57. Gomes is called for an over and back, and the ball turns over to the Kane. Well, Coelho gets into the game and does something positive immediately. He comes from a basketball family. You mentioned he is from Portugal. His dad played on the Portuguese national team, he anticipates the lane well. Gomes hustles, but steps in the back after he gets possession. So here's Marcus Barnes getting the ball over to Coelho. Darius Rice, who has 45 threes this season, the tallest of the Canes. He has one today. Working outside the arc. Here's a shot by Jones, and he gets it down. And it is a seven-point game Providence. Jones's face-up game is stellar. He's quick. you got to play off him. If you don't, he'll go right around you. Andron gets the ball over to Maris Laksa. He pulls up in the lane. Too much on it. Jones with the defensive board. Coelho gets it over quickly to Marcus Barnes. Luke pass down low is intercepted by the freshman Gomes. Up court it goes to Abdul Mills. So now the uh, Friars with a half court offense burning a little clock down to 7.45 as you see to play in the half. Take you Kaba and Coelho trying to get into each other right here. Two backup point guards trying to create some action off the bench. And the uh, Providence Friar defense is forced five Miami turnovers. Here's Amron rejected. Sent back rudely. Lead pass. Barnes gets ready to fire. Rebound comes down to the Friars. Gaba gets it up to Mills. But not moves. And the ball is stripped from him by Coelho. But he touched it last. Friars ball inbound. Coelho solid in the minutes that he's getting right here. Delivering well, playing defense solidly. That's what Perry Clark needs from his bench players. A good start for the Friars, but Miami are an explosive team. Welcome back to the Miami Arena. Don Crickey with Bob Wenzel, Big East basketball, the Friars and the Hurricanes. Nationally ranked Miami falling behind by as many as 10 points at 30 to 20. It's now a seven point Friar lead. In their last game against Pittsburgh, same scenario developed. They did not get off to a good start. Pitt was ahead. Perry Clark's team came back and won that one in double overtime. They are undefeated in the Miami arena, partially due to the efforts of that man, Darius Rice. But they, as you have mentioned, are a very, very balanced team on the offense and defense. But Providence shooting extremely well, and that is what their formula for success. Douthat gets the inbounds pass, but can't get it down. A good play, but no points, and here come the Canes. Miami would prefer to set up, get good percentage shots, and crash the offensive boards. Providence would prefer to increase the tempo of the game and get the fast breaks going. Coelho drives to the basket, and a foul stops play. It'll be against the Friars. Hey, when you watch Linehan play defense, Bob, the amazing thing is not just his quickness, it's his balance, how the guy can keep his feet. He goes so fast and then able to stop. This is unusual right here. Paolo Coelho has not played a lot this year, and he's gotten into the game, made two excellent defensive plays, and has the wherewithal to take the ball to the basket. He is not shy. He does have experience. He's been around for a number of years. So Coelho giving him a little lift off the bench. Linehan hawking the inbound throw, and he is successful as it's a... Intercept by Mills, and Abdul Mills takes the length of the floor. Lays it in for the Friars, and they lead by nine. Well, right now you're seeing characteristic Providence basketball the way Tim Welsh would like to play. He would like to press full court and get the tempo going. You see the balance that you mentioned of Lenahan really bothering Barnes. The problem for Providence is when Laxa and Andrin are in the game, they're not as capable of pressing. Another Friar steal. Andman forced that one out to Mills. He pulls up and gets it down. So the Friars on the road are a hot team, and they build their biggest lead as Tim Welsh 
sees the Friars go up on Perry Clark's Miami Hurricanes by 11. The game is going the way they want right now. They are not having to press to get steals. They're getting them in the half court as well. A response by Rice inside. Province had 13 steals against Connecticut, who's a pretty decent ball handling team. And they're on the way to that total already today. Darius Rice leads the Canes in scoring. He now has 10. Big factor in this game, though, Bob. Miami's turned the ball over seven times. The Friars have turned it over just once. Really taking care of it. And that man, Gomes, doing a great, great job inside. Best game of his young career. He's got 14 already. It could be a career game. There's a lot more of those to come for Ryan Gomes, though. He just has it. Whatever it is, he's got it. <laughs> he does. He has a sense in the field. Look at the field goal percentages. Uh, the Friars shooting 57% on the road for the season so far. Only 40%. They were ignited last week when they were at home at the Dunkin' Donuts Center against UConn. A little bit of a uh, pregame scuffle with the St. John players. And the Friars came out angry. They lost their halo for a while. <laughs> Well, they played well against St. John's, and then St. John's went ahead and beat Boston College. But this is the best shooting game of the year so far. They rely heavily on the three, which they've done tonight, but they have gotten a lot of layups in the fast break. When those two things are going at the same time, that's dangerous. Mills gets it out. Nice pass by Douthat underneath the Gomes. A reject, no foul, but the ball is kicked over to Mills. And he gets an open look, and I'll tell you one thing, Abdul Mills, you could put a bag over his head and he'd knock it down at this point. He can't miss. They are high. Mills on the outside, Gomes on the inside. Playing solid enough defense. There's a big time play at 6'10", left-hand dribble. Shooting off the bounce is Darius Rice, and he cuts the lead to 10. Darius Rice now has 14 for the Canes. He has responded to Gomes. Right here, the other Miami players not as much involved as they normally are. Now a whistle stops play. And we're going to have a 30-second timeout. Perry Clark, I asked Darius Rice what makes Perry Clark a good coach, and he said uh, he'll never let you be satisfied. He keeps pushing. Time now for a look at the Army of One, brought to you by the United States Army. Well, Providence history, they've been to the Final Four two times, and during that time, Rick Pitino was coach, and of course, he, the famed coach of the Celtics, and now with Louisville, and Billy Donovan, who's got the nation's second-ranked team, the head coach at the University of Florida, averaged 21 points per game for that Providence Friar team, a fun, fun team to watch, and they instituted the pressing and shooting three style that is very much in evidence with the Friars today with Tim Welsh. It's a great basketball tradition at Little Providence College. Coming up, the American Century Halftime Report, Big East Point Guards. And also have, we'll have a look at the great play of Allen Iverson in his two years at Georgetown, plus stats and highlights today. And the highlights for the uh, Friars of Providence have been the shooting of Domes and Mills. They have 14 and 10 points, respectively. And now, Adrian. you got to be kidding me. He was well contested, a set play. You know, when you shoot as many threes as Providence does, sometimes, you know, you have no conscience. You miss six in a row, you just keep firing. And this is one of those days where they are very hot. And Rice keeping them in it by himself. He has scored the last three possessions in a row. Seven points for Rice. A 6'10 who can score inside and out. Now Andron tries to get it down low. There'll be a foul call on Darius Rice, who is a high school All-American in Jackson, Mississippi. And he was uh, one of the 30 people on the preseason list for the Naismith Award was Big Darius Rice. Unbelievable. Very impressive young man, Darius. Perry Clark is not happy with the defense of his team. Normally, Miami plays the half-court defense and does not allow people to get a first step on them. Chris Andron has made threes. He has taken the ball to the basket for layups, and now he's taken to the ball to the basket and gotten fouled. Bob comes back in as we see uh, Pittsburgh still leading at Georgetown. And Kentucky now rallying to take a five-point lead at Notre Dame. The 12th ranked Wildcats of Kentucky. Andron at the free throws. And it's a 12-point lead for the Friars with 3.54 left to play in the first half. Three-point shooting. Providence hit 6 of 11 so far. That's been a big difference. Miami 4 of 11 threes. 
Don Cricky and Bob Wenzel back at the Miami Arena. You mentioned, Bob, that Darius Rice is keeping the uh, Hurricanes in the game. And he certainly is with 17 points as we take a look at the Hyundai game summary. Well, at the bottom, that's Rice, 17 points on seven of nine field goals. But the three-point field goal shooting for Providence has been very, very hot. And as a result, they got a big lead. Darius Rice with 17 already. There he is, the big sophomore. His career high in the game is the 24 he scored against Florida A&M. Well, that is against a weaker competition than the Providence Friars. A little bit uncharacteristic for Miami for one player to get a lot of points like that. Usually, they spread it around. We know that four of them average 13 points a game. As a result, they are a little bit out of sync here. Rice with 24 against Florida A&M in uh, December, last December, is career high. That's a season high of 24, was 35 against Central Florida a year ago. Well, John Salmon's back in the game, and really, he feels he can take the ball to the basket on the smaller guards at Providence. He's 6'7". He is the tallest point guard in the Big East Conference. And right here, he gets by Andron. When he gets close to the basket, he's big enough to jump over post players on the opposing team. Darius Rice fires long distance. Somebody right in his face, but Rice now has scored 20 points. And he, he brings the Canes back to within nine with three and a half to go in the half. Well, they are needing him right now, but this end of the floor has been a problem for them. Providence has effectively spread out Miami and then either hit a three or taken it inside. Now we're having an offensive foul signal against the Friars. Ball turns over to Miami as it looks like Andron was called for pushing off. He was trying to post up and put his hands around the Miami defender. Tim Welsh not happy, happy about the, the situation. Of course, very pleased that he's up on the road. He talked to us before the game about the fact that he wanted to press a lot. He felt like the key to their team is to make outside shots. Simmons asleep on that pass. Here's a steal by the freshman Ryan Gomes. Two men back to defend him. But he wisely sets it up. They want to get a shot here quickly. Miami did a good job of getting back there and defending the transition game. Simmons made two bad passes in the same possession that time. Friars with a nine-point lead, looking to shorten the half a little bit, using some shot clock. Linehan takes a look. Game shot clock is done. Uh, Turning back over to Miami. Traveling violation by Linehan. And the ball is back over now to the Canes as in the backcourt. Salmons will work with Simmons. There's a hot shooter for the Friars. Abdul Mills, who has scored 10 points in this game. As the Gomes has been quiet for a while now, Bob, but he has 14, the freshman for Providence. He really got his on the offensive boards and running the floor. Since Miami's gotten back a little better, he's a little bit more out of it. Providence a lot quicker. They are after it. They seem like they want it more than Perry Clark's team. And Perry upset. He was really ranting at that last situation. He was happy about his team's defense. Sanders in now. He's a better, longer defender. He's going to try to cool Rice off a bit. A215 left to play in the first half. Jones goes down low. Rice, they're on him tightly now. They have Sanders on him. They try to get uh, more defense on the arc and not let uh, Rice get these free looks. Rob Sanders is a freshman in for the Providence Friars. Gomes, another freshman, rebounds. These Friars are going to really be good down the line, as mentioned, at 10 freshmen and sophomores. I think they're going to get better as the season goes on. Laxa was out. Augustine, who's one of their better players, is out for the year with an injury. He's going to be red-shirted. A little over-anxious on the part of Salmons. Miami a little frustrated right here. They're not able to get any rhythm at the offensive end. Darius Rice left high to complete the alley-oop against Indiana. It just so happens that this runs in the family. Rice's uncle, the future NFL Hall of Famer Jerry Rice, Rice with a huge playoff game and a victory over the Jets a week ago. And now into New England tonight, where it will be snowing. And cold. Good luck to the Raiders. <laughs> and 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. 
<laughs> now, your situation in the NFL, you do so many of those games. Do you think, think the Raiders would have difficulty in, you know, those California teams when it's cold? I've never seen a California team play well in bad weather. In cold weather, bad, you know, cold and windy. Interesting thing. Not cause ever. Because they, they practice always in that kind of, they get used they to it. They just never see it. Yeah, yeah. They talk about, well, so-and-so is from Minnesota, one of their players. It doesn't matter. If you don't practice in it, it's tough to play in it. <laughs> it's different, isn't it? It's really different. And where it really gets tough, Steve Tasker from the Bills told me they'll play well in the first half. You don't get cold until you go into the locker room on the road if you're a California team. They got it up to about 80 degrees. So then you come out as we look some updated Big E scores, and it gets cold a lot faster after you warm up at halftime. That's interesting. That's interesting. It's been pretty hot in here today. Both of these teams shooting very, very well. 44 points for Providence with a, still a minute and 33 to go in the first half. They have to be extremely happy with the way they're shooting against a team that's the best team in the league at defending the three. Yes, they are. Jones now has eight points. James Jones getting some of the line. Making it a seven-point game. Look at Linehan take it down low. And the little guy takes a body bump that'll send him to the free throw line. This is intelligent play on the part of Linehan. What happens is because Miami has to defend the three so well, Linehan gets an opportunity to drive to the basket because there are lanes available. Foul is on Marcus Barnes. Kobe Bryant, the great Laker, was asked last year who's the best defensive player he's ever gone against. He said, I have to go back to high school. It's John Lenahan. Is that right? He said, he said that, said that. Huh? That's unbelievable. They're both from the Philadelphia area. Wow, that is high praise from one of the best one-on-one -on -one guys That's around. Right. Yeah, he was, uh, of course, John Lenahan's from Chester, Pennsylvania, and Kobe Bryant played at uh, Lower Marion. Yes, right there in the Philadelphia suburbs. I wonder if Lenahan had 1,400 on his SATs like Kobe Bryant did. Kobe had 1,400? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very bright guy. Well, he can speak a lot of languages, including scoring. <laughs> yeah, that's his main language. 44-37 as we close down close to the one-minute mark in the first half. Luke Pat's down low, and it was last touched by James Jones. Abdul Mills with a good heads-up play. Junior guard from Brooklyn tapped it off Jones, and the ball will be inbounds to the Friars as Harry Clark arguing the call. Harry Clark more demonstrative on the bench than he normally is. The American Century Halftime Report coming up. A look at the great combination of Big East point guards. A look back at Allen Iverson, who played two years at Georgetown and then became the number one pick in the NBA. Kentucky continues to lead Notre Dame by six. They're now at halftime at South Bend. Coaching against Allen Iverson is like they have seven guys on defense when he's in there. He guards his man and everybody else's man at the same time. Lenahan starts to three. He does. I never saw anything like it. Rebound knocked around. Gomes puts it back up. So he's been quiet for a while. Now he gets two more, though. And Ryan Gomes with 16 points to lead the Friars. And they have a 46-37 lead. This is a great job of preparation on the part of Tim Welsh, getting his team ready to play on the road against a team that's undefeated in this building. They have done a remarkably good job in the first half. Scoring outside, inside, and their defense has been solid. Here's Linehan, but not moves on Coelho, and the ball is slapped away, and we send John Linehan to the free throw line. Talking about the defense, uh, you mentioned about Allen Iverson. I mean, he could literally dominate a game, a six-foot guard defensively in a man defense. He'd take his own guy, and he was so fast, he'd double up on the ball. Absolutely. It was unbelievable. Absolutely. And he came so fast that if you turned your back at all, he would be in your shorts. Tremendous, tremendous player. And, of course, Lenahan following in those kinds of footsteps. Certainly not the offensive player that Iverson is, but Lenahan, a guy who was highly recruited, out the back in for defensive purposes on a shot block in the last eight seconds, perhaps. Lenahan, an excellent free throw shooter, over 90% for the season. Puts it up soft and gets a roll. Linehan looking to extend the lead again to 11 points over favored Miami with just 8.2 seconds to go in the half. A solid leader. This team started to hit on all cylinders. The best game they've played so far this year is the one you're witnessing right now. And 48 first half points. It should be noted the most that Miami's given up in a game this season was 79 points. That's in a game to UAB back in November. 
Providence, very good job pressing right here with eight seconds to go. Miami turns it over, disorganized against the full court pressure, throwing some long, soft passes, which are the kind that are intercepted very easily. One second left right here. Look for Providence to throw it long. They just put Anron in the game. They might go long to him and try to get off a three. A tenth Miami turnover sets this up as Gomes. There he goes down court. He went to Anron, but it was intercepted, and Darius Rice fires at. Oh! They wave it off. He got it off late, but uh, it still brought people to their feet in Miami, Florida. Oh, my goodness. Now, Perry is arguing I, this call, and he's going to argue it be. for a while, Don. I don't blame him. That was really borderline, but the officials were waving it off when the ball was in the air. Will Bush had, had it early, and he's very definitive about his call. Donnie Gray trying to create some peace. Right here, the ball is intercepted. Clock does not start. Well, pretty close. Boy, that is close. Pretty close. Will Bush definitive on his call. Perry Clark unhappy, but I learned one thing in 25 years of coaching. What they say goes. That's right. <laughs> yes, there is. Right now, though, coming up is the American Century Halftime Report. As at the half, a surprise, the Friars lead the Canes 48-37. We're at the Miami Arena, halftime of Providence in Miami. Don Crickey with Bob Wenzel. Now let's take a look at the top point guards in Big East play this season. With so many outstanding backcourt duos in Division I college basketball, there may be no conference that can boost as many as the Big East. We start with Troy Bell and Ryan Sidney of Boston College. Together, this dynamic duo combines for nearly half of BC's points this season while ranking 1-2 on the team in assists and steals. Everyone talks about our success, but again, He's the only player that got any recognition, so that clearly dictates how good he is. He really gets after it, brings a tremendous amount of enthusiasm, both offensively and defensively, and just very aggressive on both ends of the floor. At Providence College, John Linehan and Abdul Mills are not only 1-2 in points, assists, and steals for the Friars, but they have developed a chemistry based on the respect they share for each other's game. Well, Abdul is a great player. Uh, He's one of the hardest guys to defend. I mean, he has a great handle. Uh, he's been working on his shooting. His jump shot is looking really good. I've seen him take over a game defensively. I've never seen no player ever like, take over a game defensively like he did. Finally, the backcourt making the most noise this season in the Big East. Brandon Knight and Julius Page of the Pitt Panthers. This exciting combination leads Pitt in assists, three-point field goals, and minutes played, and might be leading the Big East in spectacular plays this season. I really like uh, the strength of this team right now is the backcourt. Brandon Knight is the starting point guard. I think Julius Page is emerging to be one of the better off guards in the Big East. And we'll be back with more from Miami Arena after this. New England is the birthplace of basketball. And for 75 years, Providence College has been one of the region's top teams. This anniversary season should be no different, as National and Big East powers invade the Dunkin' Donuts Center to take on the PC Friars, led by All-American candidate John Linehan. To catch all the action, call 401-865-GO-PC today. Providence College basketball, the tradition continues. I'm Barbara Morse, inviting you to join NBC 10 Light 105 and the American for that special someone. A dozen long-stemmed roses will be delivered. Welcome back to the Miami Arena. Halftime of the Hurricanes and the Friars. Don Crickey with Bob Wenzel. And we remind you that there is more exciting Big East action coming your way next week. First-year head coach Lewis Orr and his backcourt duo of Andre Barrett and Darius Lane lead Seton Hall into South Bend to take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, led by the inside-outside combination of Ryan Humphrey and freshman point guard Chris Thomas. That's Seton Hall versus Notre Dame next Saturday at noon from ESPN+. Time now for We Know You. 
Brought to you by Sitco, proud to support today's athletes. Although he played only two years at Georgetown before making the jump to the NBA, Allen Iverson will always be remembered as one of the all-time great guards to have ever played in the Big East Conference. Iverson ended his brief Hoya career as the only Georgetown player to average better than 20 points per game on his way to racking up better than 1,500 points in those two seasons. In addition to scoring, this natural shooting guard turned point guard also compiled over 300 assists and ranks third all-time in steals with 213. Entering the NBA draft after his sophomore year at Georgetown, Iverson was the number one overall pick by the Philadelphia 76ers in 96. We'll be back with halftime highlights of the Friars and the Hurricanes after this. Welcome back to uh, the Miami Arena. The halftime report, an impressive one for the Friars as they lead the Hurricanes 48 to 37. Don Pricky with Bob Wenzel. How do you pull a big upset on the road? Well, a good way to start, Bob. Shoot 58% the first half. <laughs> and 54% from three-point yeah, range, right? six of 11. Miami's supposed to be a balanced team. They are not balanced. Providence is supposed to be a team that needs to make threes. They are making threes, and that's why we are where we are in the first half. In the first half, lots of steals, six of them by the combination of Abdul Mills and John Lenahan. It led to easy basket by Ryan Gomes. Gomes has 16 in the first half. Mills has very fast hands, and his anticipation uh, very much in evidence. Lots of breakout baskets for the Friars. That's why they're shooting 57%. On the other hand, Rice has been the do-it-all guy inside and outside for Miami. Six foot ten. Rice has 20 points in the first half. He displays a pull-up jumper here, but uncharacteristic of Miami, he has 20, nobody else visible. Yeah, he's hitting 80%, 8 of 10 shots, and the rest of the team hitting about 31%. So the rest of the Canes have to step it up to get back in this. Back with the second half in a moment. We're back and ready to go in the second half. Providence 48, Miami 37. Last year, the Friars had only 11 wins two years ago, and last year they turned it around to 21 wins. A great turnaround, and they look like they could make a move up this year, this young team getting better. And the shooting in the first half in the difference. Almost 58% for the Friars. Well, that's been the big thing, and, and, and they made threes, but they also scored inside on fast break baskets. Gomes, 18 points on eight for 10 field goals. That is absolutely outstanding. Now, remember that three-point attempt that was good, but you'll see the ball is not out of Darius Rice's hand when the clock ran out to the officials right on it. It was an exciting moment, but then a disappointment for Rice and the Canes as the basket did not count and should not have counted. Well, Miami has to do a much better job defensively in the second half, getting back to prevent fast break layups. And, of course, Providence, the halftime speech is easy for Tim Welsh. Just do what you did in the first half, guys. Keep it up. But, uh, Barry Clark is, as you know, Bob, a very good strategist. He's going to change some things up in this half. First thing he does is get some looks inside, his team does, but they can't get it down. Laxa taps it over, and here's Lenahan. Despite the fact that Rice played great, and it's, a, it's admirable that he played so well, had 20 points, it is not the way Miami usually wins. And as a result, I think they're behind. It's not that he was selfish, it's just the other guys weren't in it. Gomes puts it back up. Oh, and the man. freshman, Ryan Gomes, who takes it all in stride, helps his team build a 13-point advantage. He has scored 18 points. Well, you, that's a very good point. He takes it in stride. You don't see Gomes celebrating no, no. that much. I think he thinks he's supposed to be he's really right. good. And that's amazing. He sat out the first seven games. Now a down low move by Elton Tyler, uh, spinning up with a reverse. Gets the first two of the half for the Canes. Well, you can see already what the Canes are trying to do. Jones got a layup, and they missed a tip on their first possession. Second possession inside to Tyler. Ish down low. Rebound slapped over to Rice. There comes Salmons. He's been quiet. Normally a very productive player for the Canes. I think Lenahan's got partly to do with his being his quietness. He silenced the two of the score. Now makes an 11 point game with that shot. Good start for the Hurricanes. This is what you got to do after a, a half that you did not like. Come in and establish right away, and they have done that. Laxa fires long, and rebound comes down to the Canes. Moving up quickly. 
Ball, Marcus Barnes, and now out to Rice. Barnes is smart enough to give it up quickly when Lenahan is on him. He knows that Lenahan can steal the basketball. Jones, they are trying to establish he and Tyler, and they do. Unbelievable. Those two guys were not present and accounted for in the first half, Don, and they have gone to them every possession, and they have produced. A 6-0 Miami run. Indeed, I was telling the defense, a steal and a steal back by Linehan. Ball on the way, basket counts. So Linehan with a phenomenal play. How ball often do you see a guy steal, steal the ball back like that? He's, Man. He's unbelievable. He's just a great player to watch. And now the uh, Sammons comes down, gets two for the Canes, makes it an eight-point game. So this thing could go, uh, they could be going for bonus today, going for 100. <laughs> They are four out of five in field goals attempted already in the second half is Miami. And that's what you want to do to get out of your doldrums. Linehan fires in and get it to go. Rice rebounds. This is a semi-fast break here. You see this frequently with Miami. Not layups, everybody sprinting, but transition. Excellent play by Salmons to Tyler Don. They are operating on all cylinders right now. And we know, Bob, what uh, Perry Clark talked about at halftime. Pound it down low. Let's get these big guys involved. And involved they are as they've cut the Friars' lead to 53 to 47. So right now, Miami's got momentum, but the Friars still have the lead. <laughs> now let's take a look at a Suzuki top performer. There's one, Darius Rice, the sophomore for the Miami Hurricanes, playing brilliantly, kept his team in it in the first half, hitting 8 of 10 shots and scoring 20 points. He has not scored in the second half, but he will find out who the top performers of the season are as Suzuki presents ESPN the Magazine's College Basketball Awards during Final Four week in Atlanta. Lots of Big East guys will be among those nominated. Sometimes the players watch this and they say, hey, do I get a Suzuki if I get that award? <laughs> now we're skirting some rules, I think, if you get one of those. Right. Solid defense by Miami. Man-to-man, -man, pressure on the basketball. Been very effective in this half. This Suzuki, Bob, moves around like he's on a... Or <laughs> Linehan, like yeah, he's on right. a Suzuki. Here is Linehan shooting to the basket, knocked back, keeps his feet. And now Mills, who they've been defending, and Tyler goes down hard as there's a collision under the basket. You know how I can tell Miami's playing better defense? I hear a lot of squeaking sneakers out there, Don. First half, didn't hear much of that. You know, I don't think they were really as quick, but after the halftime speech by that man, the sneakers are squeaking and the defense is better. You can see the difference. Miami, 48% in the first half, off to a very, very good start. Well, the Providence Canes, was awesome in the first half. Yeah, they started the season, as you know, Bob, out 14-0 did the Miami Hurricanes. And John Salmon hey, said they went on the road. We're playing four Big East teams in a row. We're better than all of them. We should come home with four wins in the conference. Well, they got knocked off twice. <laughs> two and two. But that's not too bad either. Two and two on the road in this league is pretty good. Abdul Mills, quiet for a long time, can't get to go. Here comes Marcus Bonds leading the break. Two Friars back, lead the Rice, pulling up and shooting. Oh, that is a tough shot. On balance. Sprint, stop, pop on balance. Great play by Barnes to deliver. Rice showing some versatility in his scoring. Laxa, hawked by Jones. Andron gets it over. Mills takes it into the paint. Knocked away, picked up by Gomes. Too much on it. Long lead pass goes to Rice. Linehan defends, and Darius Rice. Monster down. You're right. Linehan almost stole that ball underneath. Rice kept it away. Educated play by Darius. He's getting better. He is the thinking man's big man. His other favorite game is chess. Darius Rice. As now Linehan takes a look, lets it fly, and gets the rebound. Boy, he can run it down. And Laxa with a line drive jumper and a three-pointer, and it's a 56-15. That kind of deep, that kind of offensive showing can really stem the defensive enthusiasm. In and out, tipped out by Gomes, but Rice has it for the Canes. The battle's been joined in this half, though, by the Hurricanes. A much more aggressive level of play by Miami. 
And a whistle stops play. Absolutely. You said it right. They're banging the ball inside, taking it where they can. Salmon's really trying to post up inside. He's a good post up player for a point guard. Tim Welsh concerned. May have to go to some zone. Perry Clark getting some guys in for rest purposes. Frisbee and Simmons will come in. Frisbee, the one on the right with the nice haircut. Gives him a little pizzazz on the offensive board. And Simmons did not play a good game in the first half. Was a little shaky with the basketball as a point guard. Looked more like a no haircut to me. <laughs> and at the free throw line is Simmons. John Simmons, you know what he wants to be when he graduates, Bob? Tell me. A sports agent. <laughs> you he know wants to make some money. You know what his, his major is? Criminology. There's well, no sports <laughs> agents and criminology, do they go together? I don't think we can draw any <laughs> parallels, but, but he does want to be a sports agent, John Salmons. He could represent himself, maybe. Yeah, 82% free throw shooter. One of the most uh, best all-around players in the college game is every aspect of the game he's good at. Now, Tim Wells. He's a big lead, whittled down to three. The pressure's on his friars. Back to the Miami Arena, Don Crickey with Bob Wenzel. As mentioned earlier, the uh, visiting team has won the last four times last year here in Miami. Ramil Augustine had three three-pointers, and Kareem Shabazz 11 points, including uh, a big hook shot. And then freshman Christopher Enron off the bench with uh, 12 points as the Friars were an 80 to 70 victor over the Canes here in Miami. So the Friars have won the last two times they've been here, but now the heat is on. Providence are really getting pressured a lot more defensively by a very much more aggressive Miami team in the second half. Canes have cut the lead to three. Man, look at those white shirts flashing everywhere. Down low. Rolled a clean block. There was Jones, James Jones, who got the block on Ryan Gomes. Salmons. Gets it down. He'll go to the line with a chance to tie the game with 14.27 to play. Enthusiasm abounding in Miami Arena as Miami makes a very strong comeback. Both ends of the floor. Right here, Salmons on the drive, great body balance, gets fouled and has the strength and wherewithal to use the glass to get it up. Previously, the block by James Jones, the third leading shot blocker in the league. So both ends of the floor, Miami doing it. And now Miami has outscored Providence 19 to eight in the second half and is on a 17 to three run. Unbelievable that they tied it up so quickly. I would have loved to have been in that locker room listening to Perry Clark's speech. It is all about defense as Douthat is short again. Rebound in side court. Barnes has it for the Canes. The Canes so much quicker to the basketball than they were in the first half. Pittsburgh up on Georgetown and Kentucky tight with your alma mater. And now Jones launches him way outside the arc. Sends his teammates on the bench into jubilation and gives the Canes a three-point lead. He shot that one from Boca Raton. I tell you, the Miami can make it happen fast. Wow. But you're right. It starts at this end, and there is quickness abounding everywhere. Guys diving on the floor. And now Linehan switching hands on the dribble. Draws a foul. Michael Simmons very, very aggressive defensively in the second half. He wants to show that Linehan's not the only guy who can defend. Here comes Abdul Mills back into the game, who was very hot early in the game when uh, Providence built the lead. He really was. Knocked in threes, made lots of steals. And that is a deep three from Jones. Simmons going for the steals. They're looking to take it back. And now a down low pass, and Ryan Gomes reverses the ball off the glass and down. And he'll go to the line now with a chance to tie the game for the Friars. Trying to complete a three-point play. Great action. Penetration dish. Watch how he uses the rim to protect against the ball being blocked. Gomes is a very, very solid player for a freshman. You know, he's athletic enough, he's strong enough, but he seems to have a stoic attitude that I really admire. Yeah, he uh, acts like a guy that's been there before. He has been an extraordinary player today for the Friars. Ryan Gomes, the freshman from Waterbury, Connecticut. 
and Notre Dame prep. An immediate contributor for this team as a freshman. Game tied. Long lead. Arms left open. Launches. Doesn't get it. Big problem for Providence when they lost three straight games not long ago as they were out-rebounded by 15 points a game against teams like Syracuse and Villanova. And then they came back to out-rebound St. John's by one and winning in a route last Saturday, but in this half, the Canes, Bob, have had a rebounding advantage. Now an over and back call. You're right. Providence is not a good rebounding team. To compensate, they must shoot threes well like they did in the first half, and they must press like they're doing right now. This man does have good athletes, and they are crashing the boards and getting it inside, and that's why they haven't evened up the game. You mentioned Darius Lo Rice loves chess. Well, this is a chess game between these two coaches as well, Don. Yeah, the best of those good athletes, Darius Rice, back in the game after a brief respite. Long time to go, 12.59 to play. Now Linehan positioning his offense, waiting for it to develop as they set a play and look to take the lead if they hit a shot. Chess match here. Perry Clark changed defense during the timeout and went to his own. Foul call as uh, Will Frisbee quickly gets his second personal foul. Coming off the bench, a freshman from New York City and Fresno, California City College. Well, Frisbee is a guy who they really like. They think he's going to have a good career. It's tough for him to break in with the three players, Rice, Salmons, and Jones ahead of him. Anron and Laxa come back. The shooting foreign-born players. Frisbee takes his spot on the bench for the time being while Rice comes back in. I will bring the ball in. And here comes uh, Abdul Mills uh, looking for a shot, looking to create. But that defense is on him tight. And Mark turns. Here's a steal. And here come the Canes looking to break the tie. He's got him. But it will not roll down for Elton Tyler. He will go to the free throw line where he is a 75% free throw shooter. He is, and he's a good three point shooter. Right here, Laxa is not physically strong. So Tyler able to back him into the green area of the paint. Normally, a stronger player would have forced Tyler out where the wood is, and he would have had to take a turnaround jump shot. But Laxa, not physically strong. I was on Enron. And at the free throw line is Elton Tyler from Dorchester, Mass. And effectively known to his teammates as Squiggy. <laughs> a fifth year senior set out last year because of some academic difficulty, but a very experienced player. Played in the NCAA tournament with Leonard Hamilton's Miami squads. And getting one free throw, Elton Tyler again gives the Canes the lead. Here's Laxa. A good ball fake to break free. Bring up a shooter. Javon knocks it down. <laughs> Shea Koo doesn't take a lot of threes. Bronx Regional High School knows how to play. Solid. Averages uh, under five points a game. That was a big three. Friars lead by two. Here come the game. Jones. Air ball. Ryan Gomes feels it for the Friars. Lead to Abdul Mills who pulls up. Too much on it. Ryan Gomes gets the offensive rebound on the putback. He is fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. He's already reached a career high, and this is freshman season. Gomes does a great job of running directly to the basket from one end to the, to the other. He runs the middle of the floor, gets there, and see, he is ready to clean up any misses anybody makes. And if he's not defended well, they get it to him. Good lesson for post players. Sprint the middle lane. Another attribute, Bob, of Ryan Gomes is great hands, and he touches it. It's his. It really is. I mean, he's a very, very impressive player. Probably going to be one of the top five freshmen in the league. There are many. And some of the top seniors in the league, like John Salmons. But you mentioned career high, 22 points, but not bad. Eight rebounds also. Yeah, he said he had about 10 scholarship offers, Ryan Gomes told me before the game. He wasn't a really highly recruited player. He had to do all over. He'd have 100 scholarship offers. <laughs> So the Friars lost the lead and have taken it back by four. It is with 11.52 to play, the Friars over the Canes, 64-60. In December of 1962, Miami with Rick Berry beat a Providence team which included former Boston Mayor Ray Flynn and John Thompson, 82-75.
But the Friars got their revenge in the quarterfinals of the NIT in March with a 106-96 victory. Friars went on to beat Canisius to win that 1963 NIT, the great tradition of Providence basketball. I don't know if anybody's been more important to it than Dave Gavitt. Oh, boy. Who is the George? We don't make him a historical figure, but he is the George Washington of the Big East. Yeah, absolutely. He started the Big East, had the idea that big markets would be good for television and made that combination a very successful pact in the Big East, of course, living with that. The first commissioner. And, of course, coached Providence, Dartmouth as well. In fact, his freshman coach at Dartmouth was Al McGuire. And he didn't know what his name was until he scored 30 one night. <laughs> Tyler, not scoring 30, but getting it to the basket. I didn't know that Al McGuire coached at Dartmouth. I knew yeah. he was at Belmont Abbey as the head no, he coach. He was an assistant coach. Ah. Assistant under Doggy Julian, I believe. I got you. Oh, no, Al was not the head man there. Tyler using the backboard nicely. Foul call, and that sends a Tyler to the free throw line. As mentioned, again, a 75% uh, three-point shooter. Bob Sanders, the freshman, getting a personal foul. And again, it's a one-point game. We're coming to you from the Miami Arena. Don Crickey with Bob Wenzel. Big East basketball. The Friars and the Hurricanes. And the visiting team has won the last four times in this series. Lenahan, no penetration as the zone is shifting back and forth. Combination defenses. And a fight for the ball and it goes to the big man, Darius Rice of Miami. The matchup zone was extremely effective against Pittsburgh in their victory, in their last victory here a few days ago, and I'm sure Perry Clark wants to make sure that it's used again. Although he did get back into this game using aggressive man-to-man -man defense, down deep at halftime, the Hurricanes obviously back in it. And they are shooting 64% in the second half. Providence only 35, so a big, big difference. And Tyler's been a big difference maker, Bob. Also, two points in the first half, but he's lit it up in the second. He's got ten points already in the second half. You're right, John. Amazing. Gomes can't get... Look at Gomes put it back up. Bernard King? He reminded me of Bernard King on that play. Just, you know, repetitive jumping. I was going way back to Oscar making those 6-5 uh, moves inside. Yeah, there's a lot of Bernard King. The real quick pivots. Yeah, you know, shoots, follows it real quick. You can't block a guy out like that. Good nose for the ball by Gomes. Providence really has shown me something here. Miami gave them a hurricane comeback, and they have weathered it very, very well. Good poise by the Friars. Yeah, the Canes came out and blitzed him, scoring during one step for a 17-3 uh, Miami run. Take back the lead. Now Mills is left free. He's two, and he delivers. Great ball movement right there by Providence. Everybody touched it. Dribble penetration. The right guy shooting with nobody on him. But still 10 minutes to go in the game and a lot more points to come. 69-63, Providence. Down low to Salmons, a good move to the basket. Our senior John Salmon. Moving without the basketball, Salmons goes back door, displaying all of his versatile offensive abilities in this game. Posting, shooting, driving, moving without the basketball. Down low, Gomes puts it back up. Again, using the basket to shield the defense. Gomes, solid, moved without the ball also. Boy, this guy is a basketball player. Ryan Gomes, the freshman, unbelievable. They can't stop him. And as I mentioned earlier, you told me before the game, Bob, he was concerned that they were going to really be doubling him up inside. He was going to have to shoot outside today, but he continues to make points down low. Really does a good job. And, of course, people find him. That's a key thing. A, a well-executed screen right here by Kaba enables Gomes to get open. Andron gets another personal foul and sends uh, JR, as they call him, James Jones, at the free throw line. Three fouls on Andron as Marcus Dalton is getting set to come back in now for the Friars. He's replacing Ryan Gomes. You don't want to cool that hand off very long, though. <laughs> I don't know. If I had Gomes, I'd play him 40 minutes. He doesn't look tired to me. No, he's. <laughs> <laughs> Freshmen don't get tired. Gomes is a big guy, he's a 6'7", uh, weighs in at 235. He doesn't look that heavy, but he's a solid kid. 
It really is solid. Another change in defense by Miami. Maybe 1-3-1 one, one, half-court trap action here. Trying to confuse Providence, but Providence has very good quickness. They got three guards in the lineup with Cabo, Mills, and Lenahan all at the same time. That means there's good ball handling, infrequent turnovers. Lenahan fires, doesn't get it to go. Rebound tapped over, Kabao back to Lenahan. Amazing, the smallest guy in the court other than Lenahan gets an offensive rebound. One of the dilemmas of zone defense, Don. No man-to-man -man blockouts, and therefore offensive rebounding is available. Kabao has made some nice dishes and plays today. Here comes Abdul Mills. He is stripped of the ball by big Darius Rice. The long arms of the law are right there by Rice. His 6'10 frame helped him on that one. Well, that's what Tim Welsh was telling us before the game. He said they're long-armed on defense. They can really reach into those passes. And now, doesn't go for Rice. Rebound to Abdul Mills. Kabao. Open, delivers a three, and the Friars rally, and now have taken a seven-point lead. I think Tim Welsh has found something with the three guards. You know, Lena Cabo doesn't play that much because he's behind Lenahan, but he's found a way to play them both at the same time, and their ball handling has improved because of that. Well, Perry Clark said a lot of the right things at halftime because his canes came out on fire. Now he's going to advise uh, some more counsel as we see Pittsburgh, a big underdog, goes into Georgetown. Leading by 14 in the second half. I'll tell you what, Pittsburgh gave Miami all they wanted in their last game. And of course, Kentucky and Notre Dame, a close one in the second half. Pittsburgh's a very, very good team. They are the best team, I think, in the Big East of staying in front of their man individually. Very good individual defense on their part. And of course, Georgetown coming off a big, big win at Boston College. Best in the Big East uh, early in the season would have to be uh, Syracuse, UConn, and Miami with uh, Pitt. Uh, Tim Wells had an interesting observation on Boston College. He said everybody's wondering what's wrong with BC. He said what's wrong with them is that injury to Ryan Sidney really hurt that team. They that, lost all the chemistry they had, and they're going to get it back, he said. Well, I'll tell you what. They didn't get it back the other night, and they lost to St. John's. Troy Bell really shot miserably from the field. I think three of 17. Yeah, they, you know, when that happens, they are really in trouble. Here's Rice. Going back, had enough there. Frisbee puts it back up and gets a roll. Miami needs to continue to go to the offensive boards. When they do that, they are in business. Mills out now. Two-guard lineup for Providence. They're still resting Gomes, the freshman who leads the game in scoring with 27 points for Providence. Tim Welch is a guy who substitutes a great deal, Don. You know, he's not a guy who uses five or six players, so to substitute at this juncture of the game is not unusual for him. Just as we say that, Gomes gets up and goes over to the scorer's table. He's coming back in. <laughs> Offensive foul by Douthit on that particular play. Frisbee did a good job defensively on him. Tim, he had great success at Iona also. And of course, he used lots of players there. Providence with its 10th turnover, and the Canes with a chance now to cut into the lead. 7.20 to go in the game. Providence, the early leader, leading in the half, fell behind, and rallied back to take a lead with 7.20 to go. We're back at the Miami Arena. The scoreboard changing around college basketball today. Providence with the biggest lead of 13 points in this game. Right now we see Duke in a tight game with uh, Wake Forest in the first half. The other ranked teams, Florida, up by one over Georgia. Notre Dame now getting blown out, if that is correct, 59-38. I think that might be, uh, unless they went on about a 20-hole run. Or <laughs> uh, Kansas and Oklahoma, that's a big one in the Big 12. And, of course, surprisingly, Georgia, two of their players in trouble off the court incident. They are with Florida. Florida, a dominating kind of team. Here's a lead pass up to Kaba from Lenahan. Sheku has really done a very, very yeah. good job when he's been in this game. He's handled the ball well. He's created for other people. And with Mills getting a rest, they have not lost anything with him in the game. And the uh, corrected score, Notre Dame down by eight to Kentucky. Sheku is a very uh, skilled and heady player. He yes. makes a lot of good decisions. He really does and makes shots sometimes. Didn't make one that time, but he knocked a three in earlier. Barnes now takes it up court. Gaines down by five. Long way to go, though. 6.30 to play in the game. 
Salmons really wants to post Kaba inside. You can see him under the basket in your screen. He's 6'7", Sheku only about 6'1". And he does it. Beautiful move down low by John Salmons. A turning move to the basket. He has a chance now going to the line to cut the lead to two. 6'7", on 6'1", close to the basket. Advantage, Simmons. Whenever Miami gets in trouble, they spread the floor. See how Elton Tyler way away from the basket. They and put four guys on the perimeter, Don, and they post up Salmons. And Anron just got his fourth personal foul for Providence, so he goes out, and Maris Laxa comes in. There's Anron on the bench. He lit it up here last year with those four three-pointers off the bench to help uh, Providence upset the Canes here in Miami. John Salmons knows what a good shot is and what a good shot isn't, and he also knows how to play in the clutch. And he's given Miami, they're right back in it again. Rice has been quiet for a while. He has 24 to lead the Canes. Gomes leads all scores with 27 for Providence. Significant substitution, Gomes and Mills back in for the Friars. Much more offensive-minded when those two are in the game. Vaz left free, way too much on it. Might have got it on the bank and Karam didn't even draw iron. And the lead goes down to Rice, pulling up. And he is fouled and hacked at as he tried to set his shot. Well, Cobb has made a couple of mistakes since you've said what a heady player he was. He's missed two threes badly and then fouls Rice after the, the situation and puts Rice on the line for a one and one. He's a very good free throw shooter. Cobb used to be a good, free, a good player. He lost in the last 30 <laughs> seconds. Well, he's made a lot of good plays yeah, He'll today. make some more. He, he will. But, Here's uh, a rebound in side court, missing the front end of a one and one. That's expensive. Lose the chance at two points, and the ball turns over most of the time to the opposition on the rebound. Last several possessions, Providence has not done much at their end in half court. Likely get Mills running off screens or get Lenahan penetrating at the end of a shot clock would be good. Jake, who hasn't lost any confidence, a tremendous move. You're looking for him to come back after a, a slight sink, sinking spell, and he does with a runner. Down low to Jones. Strip. Now Lenahan's claiming he knocked it off of Jones, but the official right there. Says, no, you didn't. Smiles on the faces of both Lenahan and Reggie Greenwood. John was selling, didn't, buy, <laughs> didn't close. It really was. He was there, too. Right on it. Tell you what, looked like it was up. No, at the last second. At the last second, Lenahan. <laughs> Love to watch that guy play. He is fun. Inspiration. Oh, oh. Beautiful <laughs> move by Salmon. A pivot move inside, and he cuts the lead to two. I don't know that there's a guy in the league, Don, who's as, as versatile an offensive player as Lenahan. I, I mean, as uh, John Salmon. Yeah. God, he's inside, outside, posts, everything. A very good passer. And unselfish. Maybe too much. They were really looking to look for a shot more. Long ball. It's got it. Who else? John Lenahan drills it and builds the Friars' lead to five again. Gomes with 27, Mills with 13, Lenahan with 13 for the Friars. Laxa has nine for the Canes. Leading scorer is Darius Wrights with 24. Salmons has 16. Tyler has 12. Jones has scored 15 points. Well, Salmons now takes it outside. They grab Jones heavily so he can't get the ball up to the basket. Salmons switching roles and becoming a passer and getting Jones involved. Jones normally very good free throw shooter, but lots of times you chart free throws at the end of a game and see how well guys shoot in pressure situations. Lots of coaches, what they do is they do uh, the ink changes. If you do a guy's free throw shooting in the last three minutes in red ink, see what his percentage is at that time. New season high for Providence, 12 three-point field goals in this game, and that is why in the position they are in. Good position on the road, but the uh, position is a tenuous now. A three-point advantage, 426 to play, and Salmon's trying to ball hawk Linehan, and uh, Mills has to go way up to get with almost an errant pass, shooting off the dribble in the face of pressure, and Abdul Mills connects. He's got 16 points, and the Friars again lead by five. Tyler with a turn and a bang. Miami. 
Miami one pass into the paint the last four possessions. That's the reason that they're staying in it. At the other end, Providence runs clock, runs clock, and usually comes up with something good. Lenahan yo-yoing the ball inside and out. Guards doing a lot of dribbling, but they're protecting the ball, and now Mills needs a place to go. It's almost a five-second on him. Here's Lenahan picking it up. Gives Andrew a look. Block. Rebound to Gomes. Lacks it. Down with a rebound. Puts it back up, and he'll shoot two. Ryers coming in uh, with a 1-3 conference record. Last year, they won 11 Big East regular season games, the best ever for Providence. And then went to the NCAA tournament. A blocked shot. Usually when that happens, nobody knows where the ball's going to go. Laxa on the spot. And even though he's not a guy who elevates very much, uses his body to draw the foul. Certainly a textbook stroke. He has a beautiful stroke. Tim Welsh talked to us before the game about how well he played in the summertime. And then when he had his leg injury, the stress fracture, that threw their rhythm off a great deal early in the season. And he missed seven games with a stress fracture of the foot. Did Laxa. Now with 3.29 left to play, it's 83-78 Providence, and there's a timeout on the floor. Back to the Miami Arena. Don Cricky with Bob Wenzel. The three-point shooting of the Friars has been a difference maker. They have an 18-point advantage on threes. They have six more threes than the Canes have as we now look at the BMW ultimate drive of the game. Well, fittingly, Ryan Gomes receives this award tonight. The BMW drive of the game by the freshman who has 27 points, 16 in the first half, 11 in the second half, and many on beautiful drives like that. But the three-point shooting of the Friars, they've hit 12 of 25, that's 48%. Miami's hit six of 16 three-pointers, 38% three. And a career high for the freshman, Ryan Gomes. Someday his career high might be 50. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he scores around the basket as well as anybody in the league. First possession, 2-3 zone, may come traps out of it. Douth it in the game, he is the longest of the Friars, 6'10 and very long arms. Drive to the basket. There'll be a foul on the play, but no basket as Salmons is unable to hit. He'll go to the free throw line. Uh, Friars, of course, losing their number one scorer, Aaron Maxey, and their number one rebounder from last season, season from Kareem Shabazz. And both of those also provided inside defense. You know, last year Providence pressed a lot. When you got through the press, you know, things happened in the backcourt. You can see Salmons playing a heck of a lot better in the second half than he did in the first half. But Maxi and Shabazz provided shot blocking and rebounding, and that is where Providence is weakest this year. They are a very good ball handling team. They shoot the ball. When they shoot the ball, they can beat anybody in the league, and I don't think anybody's going to be surprised. I asked Mike Bray what he thought of the league, the Notre Dame coach. He said he thinks everybody's going to be 8-8. Eight eight. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, there's no upsets in this league. Anybody can beat anybody. But, you know, you're talking about the youth of Providence. The Canes have also got a lot of young, like Darius Rice is a sophomore. Marcus Barnes is a sophomore. Sammons is a senior. But there's some good players coming up as uh, the 15th Miami turnover now brings uh, Coach Clark off the bench and gives the ball back to the Friars with a four-point advantage. Back to man-to-man -to -man on the part of Miami. It was what got them back into the game. They're well-rested enough at this juncture. The problem for them, end of shot clock, Lenahan penetrating like that. Beautiful lead, but there's no shot for Sheikou Kaba, so he dishes off. Now a battle for the ball. Gomes gets it. He has it knocked away, and the Canes come up with the ball. 2.40 to play. Lead to Sammons. Ooh, a foul call, and there's no question that inadvertently, as uh, Sheikou went for the ball, he got uh, Sammons on the face. It was over to say it was... Unintentional, which Sammons knew, and it's a, now a foul on the Kaba that will send John Sammons to the free throw line, where he is an 82% shooter. Well, he has poise, and he's been around the block. A fourth-year senior has started pretty much every single year, all the games. The guy who wants to be a sports agent. Is he going to represent just basketball? Or is he going to represent other other athletes as well? I don't. I would presume, Bob, when he hangs out his shingle, they all are welcome. <laughs> Since everybody's making a zillion. Free throw shooting right there. Salmons is 
Lenahan's the guy that you want on the line, late game situation. I think Barnes should play off Lenahan a little bit. Lenahan is too quick for anybody. Timeout, Tim Wells, she wants to get something good, but if Barnes pressures Lenahan, Lenahan's gonna be able to get by him and create. 83-81 as we now take a look at our best play of the game brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Lenahan with the three. And that was at a juncture of the game when Miami had closed it to one point. Lenahan extended the lead on that particular three. And it was a critical juncture of the game. We are now in another critical juncture. It would appear we're heading right down to the final horn and maybe beyond that. This could be OT here in Miami as the Friars led by at one point by as many as 13, lost the lead, then rallied back. Hold to a two-point lead as they inbound the ball to their ace in the back line, John Lenahan. Eku <laughs> Kava tries to go inside, dribbles it out with his left and right hand, a switch hand dribbler. Now here's Laxa. No shot, good defense by Jones. And Laxa fires as the oh shot my clock goodness. goes down to one, and Maris Laxa hits a huge shot for the Friars, and they lead by five. You have got to be kidding me, Don. He was guarded well. He came off a screen, and didn't even off. think about it. That is the toughest shot of the game so far. He's wow. a little off balance, too. He kind of was moving sideways, but a great shooting touch. And Laxa, who's come back from a stress fracture of the foot where he missed seven games, Makes a huge play. Watch him again. Well, this is really a tough shot. And Jones is right on him. Nothing but net. You've got to admire that shot. A confident Maris Laxa. So now, at this point, every possession becomes very important for the Miami Hurricanes. There's uh, 150 to go. And you know that the, uh, the Friars, if they get it back, are going to be running the, clank, the game clock down, shorten the game. And looking to make it five straight times that the visiting team in this rivalry has won. Well, both teams have two timeouts left. And as a result, they can stop the clock in in-game situations, especially the team that, be, that is behind, Miami in this case, needs to do that after scores. Providence in a zone because they think it'll take Miami more time to shoot against it than, than it would against man-to-man. How about Lax's three-point numbers? Hit four of six so far today. Down low, they kick it out to Rice. Darius Rice buries a three. And the Canes are back to within two with 1.33 to play. That was a set inside-outside play out of the bench. Excellent play on the part of Miami. An excellent idea on the part of Perry Clark. That is unbelievable. What a response by Rice. Laxa, you described, made a great three. Right here, a clean three by Rice. Wow. Rice cooking. Rice has been shooting phenomenally. He has 27 for the game. And the Rice from the field today has taken 15 shots, and he's made 11. Unbelievable. Wow. He and Gomes are on fire. Career high for that man. When really he gets it going from three-point range, I mean, it is so, so smooth. Very impressive young guy. Really a quality kid. He's going to get better. Look at these three-point field goals. Providence, 26 of them, making half. It is a valuable and integral part of their offense when they win. Did you know Bob Darius Rice follows the axiom of his uncle, his famous uncle, Jerry Rice, of the Oakland Raiders. And that is, don't let anybody outwork you. Sure seems like nobody's out shooting him in this game. Oh, man. Here's Lenahan now. Yo-yoing the ball again. Pressure defense from Miami. They're attacking the ball, bringing people way out. Laxa with Jones on him. Puts it on the floor. Shot clock down to 10. Here's Lenahan driving to the basket. At 5'7", he's got no shot. A shot to Laxa. He's got a loss. On the way, traveling violation on Maris Laxa. And the ball turns over to Miami. The Canes with a two would tie it, with a three would take the lead. Great defense on the part of the Hurricanes on that possession, and they needed this badly. Laxa 
That is legal in Europe where he is from, but no three steps in the United States basketball. I don't know. Questionable call. Inside of a minute to go. Miami on the home floor. Down by two, and now it's tied as to the basket goes John Selman. 51 seconds to play, tie game. The pressure defense continues, and now Coach Welsh wants to talk it over with his Friars. And Coach Clark at the other end huddles around with his Miami Hurricanes as PC is out of timeouts. Well, right here, the direct pass to the paint has been extremely effective for Miami in the second half. Salmon's chief among the architects of that particular play doing a great job of posting up. He is difficult to handle in the paint, especially when he is being defended by a guard. This is the second game in the row where the Hurricanes have come down to the wire. They beat Pittsburgh in double overtime the last time out. Providence playing one of their better games of the season. Miami, a stellar record when the games are close. Nine and one. And this one is as close as it can get. 86 all with 43 and change left to play. 43 seconds. Come. It'll be the possession of the Friars looking to set up a shot and take back the lead. 27 seconds to go on the shot clock. Tim Welsh diagramming a play right here. Now what happens in these situations, ideally you'll get what happens on the, on the corny board. But what happens is the defense usually will take something away and you maybe have to go to your second or your third option. So frequently you want a certain player to get, get the shot if he doesn't get the shot, the guys have to know how to play out of the play. And Lenahan would be the chief guy to penetrate. Mills, you want to look at him for a three maybe coming off the screen. But Lenahan will penetrate at the end of a shot clock. We talk about the stagger screens. A couple of guys trying to pick off a defender. Let's see what we do now. Ball inbounds to Lenahan. Shot clock on the left. Game clock on the right. And again, the Miami defense harassing, hawking out, way out after the ball. If you defend that far, you are liable to be penetrated upon. Who's going to take it? Down to seven seconds on the shot clock. Down to four on the shot clock. It's Linehan. In and out. Rebound. Tyler. And Miami with 15 seconds to play with a chance to win it. But we could be heading to overtime, and now Perry Clark wants a timeout. What a game. Solid defense on the part of Miami on the last possession. Prevented penetration and forced a three by Lenahan with Salmon's hand in his face. 6-7 on 5-9. Salmon's challenges it well. And as a result, Lenahan comes up empty. And Miami has the ball and a chance to win it at home. And uh, everybody, a, a coach at this point, looking on, Bob, but you have to think with the success Miami's had in the second half of pounding the ball down low, and if not getting the hoop, at least getting to the line, we might see that. Let's take a look at our American Century on the money player of the game. Well, Ryan Gomes had the, the best game of his young career, 27 points and 10 rebounds, and should be rewarded with good recognition. But at this point in the game, it's anybody's guess. The balance of Miami can come into play. As you see, they have one timeout left. Providence, no timeout left. And the Canes are shooting two on all Miami, on all Providence fouls. Well, right here, what you want to do is get the best shots you can as fast as you can and also get an opportunity for offensive rebounding. The likely candidate, obviously, for Miami would be John Salmons. As you see, Mr. Mills take his stance defensively. But as we mentioned all along, Miami, a very balanced team. Marcus Barnes has made shots to win games, most notably against Pittsburgh and LSU. That man, even though a center, can make a perimeter jump shot, Elton Tyler. But Salmons is the one you would expect to make the play. Well, Salmons has the ball now. Driving to the basket, pulls up. Rice fires long distance and hits it. 
Five seconds to go, Don. Plenty of time for the Friars, but, but no timeouts. They need a three in the hands of Abdul Mills. He's going to shoot it. Abdul Mills pulls up. Fires and hits it. He was fouled, but was he not? No foul. The basket's good. They're calling uh, Tim Welsh's that saying he was fouled, but Mitchell says no, but the hoop was good. And so, my friends, at the end of regulation, we're right where we were at the start of regulation. Dead even. We're going to overtime. Second game in a row, Miami in this arena will go overtime. Fantastic shots That's by both players. Very close to a foul, too. Darius Rice makes his three. And then Abdul Mills makes his three. Phenomenal plays individually. Salmons dishes. He wanted to penetrate, but he dishes it back. And Rice makes his shot. And then, of course, at the other end, with 5.7 seconds to go, Mills dribbles the length, Man, and you you called it right. They had some body on him, but refs reticent to make a foul call in a situation like that. Right now, the refs, uh, and you have to applaud them for it, are reviewing the play. Now, can they actually call a foul after? Uh, no, it, they can look at the play to make sure it was a three or a two, which is probably what they're doing right now. They know that the basket is good. We know that he was fouled also. Both officials on that replay, we can't see where his feet were. The, the, what they're looking at is to see whether his feet, see how close he is to the basket when he comes in bounds here. The question is, did he leave from behind the line or was his foot on the line when he took the shot? If that would be the case, of course, that would be a two instead of a three and the game would be over and Miami would be the victor. That would be a very, very tough call. Well, we'll try to get another look now to see where his foot was when he released the ball. Abdul Mills with a tremendous play for the Friars when they had to have one. The last time that Miami played back-to-back -back overtime games was back in 95. Well, it is a three right here. He is behind the line. The white sneakers are on the line and the black sneakers are behind the line. Yeah, it's good. And Abdul Mills is wearing black. So it is a three-point try at the end of regulation, and we go to a five-minute overtime. Unbelievably exciting game and well played, Don. You know, it's not like people are making errors, and that's why the games are being, what, why people are making shots and making tough shots and, and, and shots that are designed. Perry Clark designed a great play the last two times where he got the shot that he wanted. Rice nailed two threes. And then, of course, the individual effort on the part of Abdul Mills. Wow. The hit by Darius Rice gave him 30 points for the game. There's Darius. But uh, his shooting number is just extraordinary today. He's been tremendous. Sometimes Darius Rice is 12 of 16 from the field. Sometimes people get in a zone and the basket looks so big like it's the Atlantic Ocean that anything you throw up is going to go in. And I think Darius is enjoying this whole effort. In the last two minutes of regulation, Providence and Miami combined to hit four out of five three-point field goals at that time. Unbelievable. Wow. Well, there's going to be more long-distance launching as we head into overtime now. Rice ready to jump against Gomes. A big height advantage for the Canes in this. Gomes controls the tap. <laughs> Just another thing the freshman's doing well. This guy knows how to play. He left early on his jump and got it on the way up, it looked like. That's the smart ones do. And now Mills fires and doesn't get it to go. But Linehan gets the offensive rebound. It caroms out to him. In a time, in a overtime game, Don, each team gets an extra timeout. So even though Providence was out of timeouts, they will get one in this in this overtime period. Mills takes a look. They're looking for their quarterback, Linehan, to get in the ball. Now Gomes down, though. They've really been doubling up on him, denying his shot attempts. Now Gomes gets it low, working hard to get it up. Ball knocked away. Darius Rice picks it up. And the Canes come down the floor. Uh, Long ball is on the way. It is no good, but the follow-up is slammed down. Rice again. 32 for the sophomore and a two-point lead for Miami. Four minutes to go in the overtime. Miami's defense so much more aggressive, so much more challenging in the second half. Coming out to meet the ball. 
The question will be isolation penetration. Kaba drives to the basket. His shot rolls off, but he will go to the free throw line and shoot two. Providence has really mixed up their ability to drive to the, to the paint and pass to the paint. With three guards in the game, it's very difficult. One of the forwards for Miami must defend, and Rice showing his ability to go to the offensive boards. And Kaba on the other end, driving to a cleared lane, able to pick up the foul. So you see big against small. And the foul was on Elton Tyler as Kaba's at the free throw line now. Jeku Kaba with a big hit from the free throw line. He can tie it with another. He's from the Bronx, New York, a sophomore and a 73% free throw shooter. And the ultimately confident player. Second one rims out. Canes get the ball and hold a one-point lead with 3.40 to play in overtime. Lenahan and Salmons. Salmons would much prefer to take Lenahan inside than fool around with him out there. Turn around, like that. Rims out, but Salmons in position to follow it up. The put back by John Salmons, and the Canes have a three-point lead. Salmons has an advantage in Lenahan when he's close to the basket, either posting up or going to the offensive board like he did then. Boxa driving to the basket. Tip to the ball. And it turns over to Miami. And now the Canes holding to a three-point lead in overtime. Look to run some clock. Running down the shot clock. Here's Barnes. Rice is the go-to guy. Tyler, a good ball movement by the Miami Hurricanes. Is down low they go. And James Jones puts it down. The balance is back for the Canes. Everybody involved, and that is when they are at their best. And the Friars want to call a timeout. What's happened here? Uh, says Tim Welsh. We've got to get it back together. Uh, he's protesting something on the floor also. Uh, to no avail as Miami has uh, outscored the Friars 5-0 so far in the overtime. Back to the Miami Arena, Don Cricky with Bob Wenzel. So the scores earlier today, now final as uh, Duke at halftime. They're still ongoing, has built up a 12-point lead on Wake Forest. That game was close earlier. That's a lot of points and a half. This is a surprising one. Georgia yep. beating number two, Gators, and that is in Gainesville, Don. Big win for Jim Herrick and the Georgia Bulldogs. Kentucky beats Notre Dame 72-65. Well, Frank Rylecats. And Oklahoma, a real good team, losing right now at Kansas, 30 to 25. Four guys, Salmons, Tyler Jones, and particularly Darius Rice, have scored 88 of Miami's 95 points. A three would be good now for the Friars, but a two is essential. They've got a score on this trip, down by five. Miami extending their defense. Lenahan likes this. He is able to penetrate. Three guards in the lineup again for Providence. Mills likes the pump fake and then penetrate. Mills with a stutter step, a driving shot. Rebound put back up and down by Gomes, and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, you said a two or a three. I'm sure you're referring to yeah. a three-point shot, but they may have a chance for three here the old-fashioned way. A two or a three bad, they're going to get both, it looks like. <laughs> well, they get a two right here. The help comes, and as a result, Gomes gets an easy tip.